Can you list your top 10 movies? How about your top 10 friends? What about your top 10 commandments from God? Do you have a favorite command from God? Is it one of the 10 commandments? And why are there only 10 commandments? Why not 11 commandments or 14 commandments? I'm Jake Adams Wilson, and in today's episode, we're going to explore together the 10 commandments. I hope you'll stick around. Join us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our traditional service. The Ten Commandments are some of the most important scriptures in Jewish and Christian tradition. In fact, they're viewed by many as a baseline for morality within Jewish and Christian traditions, and many consider them to be a baseline for morality within our secular legal codes as well. For that reason, there have been times in the history of this country when it was very common to see the Ten Commandments prominently displayed at courthouses and city halls. These displays of the Ten Commandments have been challenged in our legal system many, many times, but in 2005, the Supreme Court decided that having a display of the Ten Commandments at a courthouse was not a violation of the Establishment Clause because the Ten Commandments had historical and cultural significance in addition to religious significance. So they have a proud history as a part of our culture and as a part of our faith tradition. But it's important for us to remember that the Ten Commandments are more than just secular wisdom or wise legal codes, things that most people can agree upon. The Ten Commandments come to us as part of Scripture. And they come to us as part of God's covenant with the people of Israel. If we look to the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, we find that the prologue to the Ten Commandments, really beginning in verse 2 and going over into the first commandment, which is verse 3, they show us that the commandments are given by God to God's people as a part of an ongoing relationship. Okay, so if we look at verse 2, it says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Verse 2 sets the stage by telling us that these commands come as a part of a larger relationship between God and the people of God. The people of God were suffering as slaves in Egypt, and this particular God led these particular people from slavery to freedom through the waters of the Red Sea. So the Ten Commandments come to the people of Israel as a part of this relationship where God is saying to them, I will be your God and you will be my people. And as a part of that relationship, you are to have no other gods before me. As a part of that relationship, you are to honor your father and mother. So the Ten Commandments are part of this ongoing relationship. And that's part of why they are so important to the identity of Jewish and Christian people. The Ten Commandments have often been an important part of educating Christians in who they are and educating Christians in the nature of the God that we love and worship. In years past, it's been very common for Christians growing up, for students, children to memorize the Ten Commandments as a part of their Christian education. In fact, the Ten Commandments used to be used for memorization and used in worship in a way that is now more common for the Apostles' Creed for us today. We say the Creed often in worship. Some of our curriculum for children and our curriculum for confirmation is based around the Apostles' Creed. And that's kind of how the Ten Commandments used to function in the past. It's great for us to try to memorize the Ten Commandments and try to internalize them as Scripture. It's always good to memorize Scripture. But it's also important for us to remember that the Ten Commandments need interpretation. They need discussion and discernment. Memorizing the Ten Commandments is a great start, but we still have to figure out what they mean and how they apply to our life today. For example, the Fifth Commandment comes to us in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And that's the command to honor father and mother. Now, it's great for us to memorize that command and be familiar with the idea that God desires for us to honor our father and mother, but what does honor really mean? What does it mean to honor father and mother? Does that mean that we can never disagree with them? Does it mean that we can never disobey them? 
Does it mean that we can ever get into an argument with them? Or maybe, does the command to honor father and mother, does it have an age limit? Is that something we're supposed to do when we're children, but when we grow up, we don't have to? Or does it apply mainly to adults taking care of older parents? As you can see, there are a lot of questions that come up when we try to interpret the Ten Commandments. My point is this. The Ten Commandments are very important, but not always obvious. So I do want to encourage you to try to memorize the Ten Commandments. But after you do that, I hope you'll find someone in your church or in your community, maybe in your family, and you'll ask them how they interpret and understand the Ten Commandments. What do they think it means to honor father and mother? How do they honor the Sabbath? How do we resist idols in our contemporary culture? I hope you'll take some time to memorize these commandments, but also discuss them with someone else. Hello, and welcome back to a segment we like to call Crafting Crafty Crafts for Jesus. Earlier today, we talked about the Ten Commandments and the need to memorize the Ten Commandments and to try to interpret and understand how to apply them in our local context. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus gives us a handy little rule for how we might embody the teachings of the Ten Commandments. This comes to us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And there Jesus says, In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. This little rule is sometimes known as the golden rule. And what it does is it teaches us that we should proactively treat others the way that we would like to be treated. And Jesus says, when we do this, we embody the teaching of the law and the prophets. In other words, we embody the Ten Commandments when we are looking for ways to treat others the way that we would like to be treated. Now, the proactive aspect of this rule is what makes it the golden rule. There's actually something sometimes called the silver rule, which is the same idea but stated negatively. And this exists in a variety of different religious traditions. There's a version of this in Judaism, a version of this in Buddhism. The idea that don't do to other people what you would not want them to do to you. Now, I hope you can tell and see that's a negative way of phrasing it. So one version, the silver rule is, don't do to them anything bad that you wouldn't want to have done to you. But what Jesus teaches we call the golden rule because it's positively oriented and proactive. So Jesus says, do to them the things that you would like for them to do to you. So the silver rule would say something like, don't murder because you don't want to be murdered. Don't do to them what you don't want. And the golden rule would say, do be patient with them because you would like someone to be patient with you. So anytime we are facing a, an ethical struggle or a conundrum, or maybe someone has done something to us that's hurtful and, and we're trying to figure out how we should respond, the silver and the golden rule can help us. And I think that the golden rule is a better way of moving forward than the silver rule. The idea that we should do to others what we would like to have done to us. And so we have a craft today that will help us to, to see and understand that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a golden ruler. And then the next time that someone does something that hurts you or offends you or makes you angry, if you're not sure how to respond, you can just pull out your golden ruler, look at the ruler and see how you want to respond. And I think it will be a great and helpful way for us to move forward embodying the law and the prophets with the golden rule. So the things you're going to need, first you're going to need a piece of paper that's about a foot long. Then you're going to need a pen, some glue, and some glitter. So I'll wait a second while you grab those supplies. And we're back. Hope you've been able to grab those supplies and we're gonna start on our golden ruler. So if you'll look with me here, we've got our piece of paper. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna number it one through 12. And as we do that, okay, we're going to be putting the, embodying the silver rule on the lower end. You'll see what I'm, you'll see where we're going. Okay, so we're gonna say right here, we're gonna draw our line. And this is gonna be our one. I hope you can see my one there. And at, at, at this one, we're gonna put um, let's say that someone has, uh, they, they said that they really don't like my cooking, okay? That really hurt my feelings. So if I'm going to apply the silver rule, get out my silver ruler, the first thing that I might consider doing is just to, see if I can write it like this, physically attack them. Okay? So that would be one thing that I could do to them. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and make another thing here. This will be my second inch of my ruler here. Save insult in my cooking. If I physically attack them, maybe I won't do that, but I could, um, I could vandalize their property. Okay. Now, I've been saying this is a golden ruler, but the first half of the ruler is actually a silver ruler. And that'll be more obvious later on, but what I've been writing here are the silver rule, the things that I want to avoid happening to me. So, the silver rule says that we should not do to others anything that we don't want them to do to us. So, do I want to be physically attacked? No. So then, I should not physically attack them. Do I want my property vandalized? No. So then I shouldn't vandalize their property. Do I want rumors spread about me? No. So then I shouldn't spread rumors about them. You see how the first six are the silver rule. I don't, we want to avoid doing to them things that we want, don't want to have happen to us. Okay. Now, with seven through 12, we're gonna to turn toward the golden rule, okay? So let's say they insult my cooking. They say my meatloaf bad. We all know that's a lie. They're just jealous, but whatever. That's how they are trying to, trying to handle this. So maybe instead of avoiding them, maybe I will pray for them. Okay. Now I hope you can see how we're moving in the direction of the golden rule because I would like for people to pray for me. So I will pray for them. I will do for them what I would like to have done for me. Number 11 is going to be, maybe I will just try to support them. Number 12, maybe I will just treat them with kindness and love. So, with our golden ruler, someone insults your cooking. Someone says they don't like your new hairstyle. If you're not sure what to do, you can pull out the golden ruler and you can look at it and say, well, I could physically attack them. I could vandalize their property. As we move more towards the 12, we move in the direction of Christ. As we move more towards the 12, we move more towards who Jesus is and what Jesus teaches. So I could spread rumors about them or I could talk to them. I could give them the silent treatment or I could forgive them all the way up to I could treat them with love and kindness and respect. Now, in the heat of the moment, when someone has insulted your cooking or whatever the situation is, it might be hard to pull this ruler out and read through all of this and try to figure out what to do. So our next step is to, is to put silver and gold glitter on this ruler so that when we pull it out, it'll be immediately obvious which are the silver things that we want to avoid and which are the gold things that we want to embrace. But anytime you're dealing with glitter, you have to be very careful because glitter, it can get everywhere. Glitter can get in your hair, in your pores, in your carpet, it can get everywhere. You'll find glitter in your washing machine six months from now, your car won't start. You'll put your keys in your car and it won't start. Your ignition will be filled with glitter. It's very dangerous working with glitter. So we're gonna take just a pause and uh, bring in some safety precautions and then we'll come back and we'll add glitter to our golden ruler. Join us Sunday morning at 8.40 a.m. for our traditional service. And we're back. As you can see, we've taken a few safety precautions here anytime you're messing with glitter. As I've said before, just want to be very careful. And I want to say a special thank you to my safety associate here, Bill Green. He's going to be on standby with the shop vac. That way, if we do have any kind of a containment breach situation with the glitter, he'll be ready to help us out, okay? So, what we're gonna do here, again, making sure that you have all, taken all the proper safety precautions, you're gonna get some Elmer's glue. Now we're gonna come over to our lines here, and we just wanna very carefully put some glue on there, just like that, look at that. And then a little bit right here, perfect. It can take practice to get good with the glue, but, um, as long as you've taken proper safety precautions, you can't really hurt yourself with it. Uh, just keep on trying. So as you can see, we're just going down the rows here on our golden ruler. Okay, almost getting there. All 
right. Now, here comes the tricky part, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna get our silver glitter and we wanna put it on one through six to remind us that these are the silver rule. So, just again, trying to be very cautious. Okay. Bill, just keep an eye, just if you see, if we, okay. All right, here we go. I can already see stray glitter on the table. See what I'm saying? Folks, this is crazy. This is just, but we've done everything we can do. Bill, you got, you're ready. Go ahead and if you can get the, if you can get the hose over here a little bit closer, just so in case we do have to go with this now. All right, now we're just gonna try to get, get it on there. Holy moly, here we go. Oh, that's classic. See, that's what happens. Okay. Okay. Now, so far, everything's okay. I haven't gotten it on me. Bill's ready to go now. This glitter, this gold glitter is much finer. The finer the glitter, the more danger of it getting everywhere. So just keep that in mind, okay? You will get this stuff. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, but Crafty crafts for Jesus must go on. So here we go. <gasps> Yikes. Okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna, oh man. I'm just not sure, Bill. This is very fine glitter, people. Let's try to get it on there like that. I, oh goodness. Maybe from just a little bit above it. I don't want to suck off the glue, but maybe if you could just, okay. Here we go. Tell you what, folks, it, it helps to have a paid safety professional. Uh, thank you, Bill, that was fantastic. Now what we have is our golden ruler. So the next time someone insults you or does something harmful to you, you can just pull this out. And as you look at this end, you see this is the silver rule, the negative orientation. So we can say, these are things I don't want to have happen to me, so maybe I should not do them to others. These are things I do want to have happen to me, so maybe I should do them to others. And when we do that, as Jesus taught, we sum up the law and the prophets. That's this week's Crafty Crafts, Crafting for Jesus. Hello everybody. Welcome back to another segment we like to call Potluck Perfection. In the church, we're often being invited to community events, to potlucks, to book clubs, to Bible studies and small groups. And a lot of times people will invite you to bring a dish with you. That can be very intimidating if you're not great at cooking. So in Potluck Perfection, we try to empower you with great crowd-pleasing recipes that are easy to make, things that you can take to your next community event. That way you won't have to skip that book club. You can just go ahead and make one of these recipes and take it and everyone will be glad you came. Today, we're going to be making something that I invented, very partial to this recipe, something called Crestitos, okay? Earlier, we talked about the golden rule and the idea that Christ calls us to treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves, right? So Crestitos utilize crescent rolls, which we bake to a golden flaky brown. So when I think about the golden rule, I think about Crestitos and I think about crescent rolls. And so I just thought this will be a great opportunity. The next time you go to a small group, you can take these. You can say, you know, I was really just studying the word of God and thinking about the golden rule. I thought, you know what goes great with the golden rule? golden brown crescent rolls. So that's what we're gonna do. What we need to start with are some crescent rolls. We're gonna need some cheese. We're gonna need some Cheetos. I have crunchy Cheetos. And for people who like a little spice, I have cheddar jalapeno crunchy Cheetos and some cheese nips and a beverage of your choice. That's our basic ingredients. Again, this is not a complicated dish. So it should be great for anybody. First thing you wanna do is get the crescent rolls and uh, my, uh, and I just would like to say thank you so much to uh, my prep, prep person, Bill Green, does a great job of prepping for me so I can come in here and just get this done. I really appreciate that. Bill has already got the crescent rolls kind of going here, so I'm just trying to get these open. And you just gotta twist it on it a little bit. Push my thumb, okay. You just have to put, you just have to push your thumb on it just a second there. 
just like, hey, ta-da, Crescent Rolls, uh, ready to go. Okay, so we're just gonna pull these out. I mean, who doesn't like Crescent Rolls, y'all? That's, that's why these recipes I'm talking about, these are crowd pleasers. You show up to a place with Crescent Rolls, you made friends, all right? I don't care how socially awkward you are or whatever else, you show up with Crescent Rolls, you made a friend. So we're just gonna take these Crescent Rolls, we're gonna lay them down here, spread these out just a little bit. Now, the key to Crestitos is, it is a combination of two things that everybody loves, Crescent Rolls and Cheetos. Crestitos. Pretty sweet, huh? So, we're gonna take our Cheetos. You wanna, ooh, smells like Cheetos. You wanna get a couple of Cheetos, and also you wanna get some cheese. Now, what I've found over time is that if you can make a little, a little bed of cheese inside the Crescent Roll, that helps the Cheeto kind of nestle down in place there. It's not necessary, but it can be helpful. So we're just gonna take this, put a little bit of cheese right here, Okay, we're gonna take a couple of Cheetos. I'm just gonna push those down in there real nice. Get them in there pretty good if you can. Okay, now it's always a temptation with this recipe to try to put too many Cheetos, and I've done that many times myself, but you know, you just kinda gotta live and learn. That's probably honestly already too many, but I'm just gonna, we're just gonna go for it, you know? We'll see. That's one of the great things about crescent rolls is you get a whole can of them. So if you're, you know, you put too many Cheetos in the first one, you can just come on back and try it again. So we tear off this one particular crescent roll here and we're just going to roll it up with Cheetos in there. Now, quick pro tip, okay? Any part of the Cheeto that is exposed will burn um, and it will stink up your whole kitchen so if you've got a little extra crescent roll there on the tip you can just kind of pinch that off and I just tore off a little bit here and I'm just gonna put that right in there cover that up and then there you go we've got one crusty dough I'm gonna leave the cheese off of this one because some people are lactose intolerant and so you want to be mindful of that so we're not gonna put um, cheese in this particular one I'm gonna try to do a little bit less Cheetos in here so that we can actually have what looks like a real crescent roll. Okay, turn that. So you just want to try to do this. Oh yes, that looks great, doesn't it? That looks just like we used to have at Thanksgiving dinner at my grandmother Teen Teen's house. And I like to try to order them, you know, as the crescent roll gets skinnier, the same with the Cheetos, get the length of it like that so that, again, they don't stick out too far and then burn up on you. Look at that. Now we're, now we're hitting, we're getting our stride here. One thing I always try to tell everybody is you want to make sure that you keep uh, something nearby for you to hydrate yourself. So I always try to do that because it's a real kitchen is hot. And you want to keep a snack too. You don't want your blood sugar to crash and then all of a sudden you're in the middle of your cooking project and you just feel like, what's the point of life? I can't go on. I can't do any of this. So I always just try to keep something. You might have thought the cheese nips were for this dish, but We've got plenty of cheese with Cheetos, two different types of Cheetos, so these are just for me. These are also really good. These have a, a little bit of spice. You might want to give somebody a heads up. Uh, some people don't do as well with spicy food, so you just want to make sure that they know what they're getting into because these right here bring the heat. Yep, they bring it. Okay, now you see how that, now this is what I'm telling y'all. See how this is exposed right here? That can be dangerous because that is gonna, yeah, I don't know if it'll catch fire, but it will, trust me. So you just gotta cover it up. Now I'm gonna keep making these. We may have to time lapse through some of this, I don't know. Join us Sunday morning at 8.40 a.m. for our traditional service. All right, so we're wrapping up here and we've got some crescent rolls, um, crustitos ready to go. We're gonna pop these in our oven and in a little while we will have a delicious snack that we can take just about anywhere. And we're back, we just pulled our crustitos out of the oven 
We've cut one here so you can see they're probably a little too hot right this second for us to try. But we did cut one so you can see we've got a nice uh, baking through the middle there and the Cheetos, we don't have any burning on these. We should love one another as we would like to be loved. We should treat one another as we would like to be treated. We call that the golden rule. And what goes better with the golden rule than golden brown Crestitos? And we're back, we've got our Crestitos here and our very own Parker Lee has agreed to try them to verify for you just how delicious these are. So Parker, take your pick. Okay, so I want this one because of the cheese that's coming out of it. All right. So. Okay, and I'll try, I'll try out this one. Okay, you ready? Bon appetit. That's really good. Mm. Mm. Good job. Thank you, sir. Now, we've verified for you this is delicious, so I just hope you will uh, take it and you'll be a hit at your next book club. All right. Thank you so much, Parker. Yeah, thanks for letting me eat it. You're welcome, man. You can have all of them. Well, I promised some to the crew, but anyway. Hello and welcome back. Welcome to a segment we like to call Hymns of the Faith. Our hymn this afternoon is hymn number 153, Thou Hidden Source of Calm Repose. Earlier we spoke about the Ten Commandments and one of those commandments is the command to honor the Sabbath. God calls us to rest and to find rest and peace in God. In this hymn we hear about this and I would encourage you to look at verse 1. Thou hidden source of calm repose, thou all-sufficient love divine, my help and refuge from my foes, secure I am if thou art mine. So this is a Charles Wesley hymn, and he's singing of finding rest and finding Sabbath in the presence of God. If we look at verse 3, Jesus, my all in all, thou art, my rest in toil, my ease in pain, the healing of my broken heart. So speaking about finding rest in Jesus. So if you've got a United Methodist hymnal, I encourage you to turn to page 153 and sing along with us. If you don't, you can find the lyrics on the internet, I'm sure, or make up your own and sing along with us. So, The Hidden Source of Calm Repose, hymn number 153. Thou hidden source of calm repose, Thou all-sufficient love divine, My help and refuge from my foes, Secure I am if Thou art mine, And low from sin, and grief and shame I hide me Jesus in thy name verse 3 Jesus my all in all thou art my rest in my toil my ease in pain the healing of my broken heart in war my peace in loss my gain my smile beneath the tyrant's frown in shame my glory and my crown thank you so much for being with us end of that segment Got another one? Let's do another one. <laughs>